Good morning. Thank you for joining me on uh, Weekly Momentum. I'm Scott Wade, president of Momentum Ministries. I sure am glad that you're on here. And I encourage you to uh, share this video, to, to like it, and to subscribe and help me reach more people with the good news about Jesus. Uh, we at Momentum Ministries want to help you attain, maintain, and regain spiritual momentum. Besides this uh, weekly video, we have a lot of different things that we do. We have a podcast. We have a daily email. We've published books. Um, I'm available as an evangelist in the church. We've done prayer retreats and seminars. Just lots of different things. So visit our website at MomentumMinistries.org and find out how we can help you attain, maintain, and regain spiritual momentum. Well, uh, we are going through the first couple of uh, chapters in the book of Acts. So in, during the months of May and June, uh, I thought that it would be good for us to, to look at what happened in the early church from the time of Easter and the, uh, the resurrection through the ascension and then on to the day of Pentecost. And, and we saw a couple weeks ago uh, what happened on the day of Pentecost, how the Holy Spirit was poured out. Jesus had promised that. Jesus had told them to wait for that. Jesus had said that they would be witnesses. They would receive power when the Holy Spirit was poured out. And so uh, we are going on now uh, to look at what happened after that. Last week we looked at Acts chapter 2 uh, verses 14 to 21. And this week we're going to look at Acts 2 verses uh, uh, 21 or 22 to 36. So if you have your Bibles, I'd encourage you to uh, to read along with me. Most of what we do today is just we want to read the Scripture and hear what God has to say through the through the Scriptures. So this is verse 21 or verse 22. Now remember, Peter just begun his sermon. This was a sermon preached on the day of Pentecost to the people, the uh, worshipers that had assembled in Jerusalem for the feast, and uh, Peter had a wonderful opportunity to share about Jesus. Men of Israel, he said, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. Jesus was known. Jesus had been at work. They'd heard about Jesus. Not only had Jesus done these things, but he was, he was in their midst, they knew about it, and they had been testified to about it. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. Wow, and we're going to get to this in a minute, but they were cut to the heart. Those words, this Jesus, you crucified. As I read those words today, I thought, it was my sins that sent Jesus to the cross. It was my sins that crucified Jesus. God, God have mercy on my soul, but it was our sin that sent Jesus to the cross. He, he was killed by the hands of lawless men, but he died on the cross for you and me. But that wasn't the end of the story, was it? Verse 24, God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. God doesn't leave us in our despair. God doesn't leave us in our sin. God doesn't leave us without hope, without a ray of sunlight, but he comes to us. This had been prophesied for in verse 25, it says, David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me. For he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. David saw something beyond. David saw something positive. David saw something filled with hope. And he said, my heart was glad, my tongue rejoiced. When our hearts are glad, shouldn't our tongues give voice to that joy that is within us. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. This is about Jesus, but it's about you too, if you have Jesus in your heart. But God's not going to abandon you to Hades or let 
your soul see destruction. You have made known to me the paths of life. God has come to you to make known to you the path of life, which is Jesus Christ the Lord. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. God brings gladness with his presence. Brothers, Peter goes on in this wonderful Pentecost sermon. I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried. His tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ. When it comes around to it, it's all about Jesus. He spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Are you a witness to the resurrection power of Jesus? Are you a witness to the saving power of Jesus? Are you a witness that Jesus Christ indeed is alive? Being therefore, and this continues in verse 33, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. Jesus is the author of this wonderful thing, this fire, this power, this baptism with the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this which you are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Be certain about this. Know this, that though you crucified your sins, my sins sent Jesus to the cross. Though we crucified him, God has made him both Lord and Christ. I think about that, that, that old chorus. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Have you bowed the knee to Jesus? Have you confessed that Jesus is Lord? The scripture says it is with the the heart that we believe and with the mouth that we confess. And when we do that, as we read last week, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for this story. It didn't culminate on Pentecost. It really began there as far as the power poured out and what you were doing in the church. God, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to be at work in those who are listening to me today, that they would be saved, that they would confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. May they turn to you in assurance, in repentance, and in confidence that you indeed will save them and have saved them. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for uh, joining me on Weekly Momentum. Don't forget to like and subscribe this uh, or subscribe to this video and uh, share it with others so that they too may hear about Jesus. And that helps our ministry to, to expand as well. And one more thing, if you wouldn't mind visiting our website and uh, leaving me a message and, and just let me know uh, how you like this format for Weekly Momentum. Um, we've been doing it now for uh, six weeks, I believe, and just reading scripture, making comments as we go. I've enjoyed it. We have uh, one more week of this scheduled, but we can do more as well. And so if you like this format, uh, please, if you would, let me know. Well, God bless you. I pray that you have a great week filled with spiritual momentum.